So we are going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to stop uh, talking about finding zeros. We're actually going to expand it a little bit. And we're going to talk about what's called rational functions. And I'll give a definition of rational functions in a, in a little bit. But I want to start with just this idea of y equals 1 over x, what the graph of that might look like. Now there's a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself when you, um, when you try to visualize a graph. And one of them is, um, am I trying to divide by 0? And where is that happening? So when am I trying to divide by 0? And there's a problem there because dividing by zero is an undefined operation. It actually breaks stuff. So if I look at this function, um, when x is zero, I'm trying to divide by zero. So I know that x cannot be equal to zero. So let me think about a graph. If I had a graph, um, x is zero here. So I can't have any sort of y value when x is zero. So I know I'm going to have like kind of a dead zone there. Uh, let me think of another. Um, what happens as x gets really big? And that's either in the positive or in the negative direction. So, um, well, let's see. What happens to this as x gets really big? For example, 1 over 10. That's pretty close to 0. 1 over 100. That's even closer to 0. 1 over uh, something bigger. That's really close to zero. So I notice that as x gets bigger, tends towards infinity, um, y tends towards zero. And actually, I know it'll never get to zero. It'll never spit out a zero in this case. So that means I've kind of got a little dead zone here as well. Y can never end up being zero. So what, what I found there those are those are asymptotes. Those are called asymptotes. And what asymptotes do is they basically uh, describe extreme behavior of an equation, of a shape, of a graph. So uh, let's let's take a peek. Uh, I'm going to graph this. Y equals one over x. And notice what happens is that frame that I kind of started to sketch before where I had my asymptote here and my asymptote here, it kind of frames the shape, right? Y will never be zero. And actually X will never be zero either, um, either way. So those are my two asymptotes for the shape. They kind of frame it. So inside that frame goes like this and goes like this. And hopefully that makes sense. Like this point is 1 over 1, right? Or this point is 1 over 5. I'm, I mean the height is when x is 5, uh, y is 1 fifth. When x is 1, y is 1. Or this point, when x is 1 fifth, y is 5, because it's 1 over 1 fifth, which is 5. So let's do the same thinking with something like uh, 1 over x plus 3. So let's our, ask ourselves the same questions. Um, when, when do we end up dividing by 0? Well, when x is equal to negative 3. So that means that x cannot be negative 3. So I'm going to have an asymptote. We usually just do that with a dashed line just to show that it's there. Uh, there. What happens is x gets really big. 1 over... 103, 1 over something really big and 3. Same thing, it seems to tend towards 0 again. So this. And then what I could do is I could plug in some actual points, like let x be negative 2, that sort of thing. And I will start to notice that this will be this shape nested inside those asymptotes. Let's do another one. Uh, y equals 2x plus 3 over x. All right, same question, dividing by zero when x is zero. So I know that x can't be zero. So I'm gonna have an asymptote here. How about as x gets really big? Well, in this case, as x gets really big, it's kind of interesting what happens is um, the plus three starts to matter less and less. 
and the 2x over x kind of takes over. In other words, if I, if I have 2 times a million plus 3 over a million, the plus 3 basically is not very important. Like, it's kind of minimal. That's It'll be like... It won't exactly be this 10 to this 2 times 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 6. It won't exactly be that, but it'll be off by a little bit. So now if I if I ignore, if I just take the leading terms and compare them as x gets really big, um, I notice that, well, in this case, 10 to the 6 cancels out, and this gets pretty close to 2. So as x is getting really big, as x is going this direction, as x approaches infinity is one way to think about it, y approaches 2. It doesn't get there exactly, right? It's a little bit off because of this plus 3, but very little bit off when x is really big. So if I get up here at this value uh, where, where y is 2, I have an asymptote here as well. So I know that I kind of have these extreme behaviors where it's kind of kind of frame the shape. Let me graph that on. I could just start to plug in points and just start to get a frame of it. I'll throw it into, uh, I think this time I'll throw it into my graphing calculator since that's what I'm going to encourage you to use. Um, what was it? 2x plus 3. So I'm going to put that in parentheses so it stays in the numerator. 2x plus 3 divided by x. And you can hopefully see I've got that asymptote there. I've got that asymptote here at the 2. So if I wanted to finish um, my sketch of my graph of this, this would be here. This would be here. About, right? I'm not being exact. I'm just doing a rough sketch. All right. I'm going to get another one up here in a minute. So here we have another rational function. So rational functions, you just think of them as a polynomial over a polynomial. And that a, one is a polynomial, so something over one. Uh, something over one works as well. So it's just a polynomial divided by another polynomial. In other words, we don't have any negative exponents or fractional exponents. All right, so let's do a little bit of investigation with this, see what we can tell with this. So. Um, I had some questions like don't divide by zero. So let's think about that divide by zero. Well, I have this x squared minus 2x plus 1 in the denominator. You know, I know that that actually would factor to x minus 1 times x minus 1. So it looks like x cannot be 1 because that would force me to divide by zero. So that happens here. So I have an asymptote here. What happens is x gets really big. As x gets really big, these two variables right here are the ones that matter. They dwarf all the other variables, right? Like a million squared is substantially bigger than a million. And if that's not enough, go out to a billion. A billion squared dwarfs a billion. So I have two x squared. So essentially this thing isn't equal to, but it gets closer and closer to two x squared over x squared. Well, x squared divided by x squared is one, so two again. So this thing calms down to two. Now from there, I could, I could get a pretty decent sketch of it. Let me get some information up here like I, that, that I think will help us. So I'm going to have some polynomial a sub n times x to the n plus, you know, one less than it, all the way down to a sub 0. There's my numerator. My denominator, I'll just use b's instead of, of n's. All the way down to b sub 0. All right, so in this case, like my a sub n is a 2 and my b sub n is a 1. So I have a couple things going on. My extreme behavior is from these values right here. So notice like that gave me this 2, this height of 2, this horizontal asymptote. So this right here is going to give me horizontal asymptote. 
if it exists. And one thing I want to add here, I used N and N. These actually don't have to be the same, so I'm going to change this to an M. But I just want to compare the leading uh, term over the leading term to see if there's a horizontal asymptote. That's the one that goes this way. All right, uh, now this denominator, I know that it cannot equal zero. So when it does equal zero, that will give me vertical asymptote if it exists. Those are the straight up and down one. And there can be more than one of those. So those are the two things I've kind of checked so far. Now there's a little bit more information I can get off of this. So I can get something from these last terms as well, the a sub zero over b sub zero. And um, you might be able to guess what it is. When x is zero, y has to be that value. Because when x is zero, everything that has an x in it cancels out. I'm just left with that a sub zero over b sub zero. So this value right here will give me my y-intercept. So notice I have something going this way, something going this way, something going this way. There's one more piece right here. Uh, when this, this actually can be equal to zero because it's a, it's a numerator. When this is equal to zero, that actually gives me my x-intercepts, right? We've been, we've been kind of doing that with this bottom part being one and we've been finding the zeros by saying when that's equal to zero. So there's all my pieces to analyze. So if I think about that back with this, I have a couple more pieces. I've already found uh, my vertical asymptote, my horizontal asymptote. This looks like it'll have a y-intercept at five. One, two, three, four, five here, which means that I probably have a shape that goes in here because it has to be wedged between there and there. And then the other thing that I could do is I could factor this out and find the x-intercepts if they exist. Um, I'm going to throw this into Desmos and see what it does for me. Oh, I'll throw it in my calculator. Just so you can see how to do it. So I'm going to need my parentheses. The top was uh, 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. Close off those parentheses. Uh, get that 5 in there. Close off those parentheses, divide by x squared in parentheses, the whole uh, denominator as well, x squared minus 2x um, plus 1. Do, 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 graph it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's going through that 5 right there. And then notice that this doesn't have any x-intercepts. And I could figure that out either by just graphing it myself are going ahead and plugging in some points. Those are both fair games, good, good ways to go about doing this. So the other part of the equation looks like this. Notice that this and this are both bounded within of those um, asymptotes, like that. Let's go ahead and do this one real quick. Um, and taking a look at this, I'll do my asymptotes first. So horizontal asymptote, if it exists, Oh, this should be squared. Sorry about that. 3x squared over 2x squared. So if I think about that, 3x squared over 2x squared. x squareds cancel out. 3 halves. So it looks like, if that's 1, that's 2, it should have an asymptote up here at about 3 halves. And that would be y equals 3 halves. Uh, let's do vertical asymptotes. That would be I can't divide by zero. So I'm going to factor that. That factors to, let's see, uh, 2x plus 2 minus 1, because that would be 4 minus 1 is 3. Yeah, great. So zeros here would be negative 2 and 1 half. So there should be an asymptote here. And if that's 1, there should be an asymptote here as well. So now notice what I have is this thing broken up into, uh, into several pieces, right? I have a couple of regions here. Um, do, 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 y-intercept. Y-intercept is this part right here. Negative one over negative two is just one half. So should cross about here. 
And how about those zeros? Those S x intercepts. I wonder if that's factorable. 3x squared. Um, yeah, sure it is. 3x, x minus 1, that gives me a negative 3, plus 1, that gives me a 2. So it looks like it should cross the x-axis at negative 1, which is here, and then at negative 1 third. Oh, sorry, positive 1 from that. So at negative 1 third, which is about here, and at 1. So I suspect now there's enough information. If I if I wanted to like sketch the rest of it by hand, I'd start plugging in x values and get y values. And I know that this is probably going to do something like this. This will be bound between these two. And this one over here, it's either going to be here or here. But since I didn't see another x-intercept, I don't think it's going to be this one. I think it's probably going to be something like this. So uh, let me look at it on Desmos. Yeah, there it is. And you can see the asymptotes on there. Because um, we said we had one here at, at one and a half. We said we had one here at one half, x equals one half. And then the other one was, uh, what, negative two? Yeah. There's the asymptotes. And see how it's framed in there. Now, one thing that uh, some people mistake about asymptotes is uh, they start to think asymptotes are lines that the... Um, that the equation that the graph never touches that's not exactly true at what asymptotes do is they they describe extreme behavior so if you look out here this line is getting closer and closer to that but never touching it same thing here getting closer and closer to it but in here it just crosses it that's fine because asymptotes really describe extreme behavior now, the, the vertical asymptotes will never be crossed because you're dividing by zero there. But the, the horizontal ones, you can cross them kind of locally. Um, and even, you know, eventually, you know, you might go like that with it. But they basically talk about how at extreme behaviors, when x gets really big positively or really big negatively, that's what the line tends towards. All right, let's take a look. At this one. Now this one's going to be a little bit different. Let's look at that horizontal asymptote first. So we take those first two lead terms. Now notice this is a case where they're not of the same degree. I have 5x over x squared. So be careful about this canceling. This cancels to 5 over x. So my asymptote is not at 5. Um, in fact, as x gets really big, 5 over really big number, that gets really close to 0. So I have an asymptote here at x equals 0. Because as x gets big, after I reduce this down, that's what it tends towards. Be careful about what cancels and what doesn't cancel. Um, OK, y-intercept, it's going to be like negative 21 fifths. I won't worry about it. Let's do vertical asymptotes. Factor this. Uh, x plus 5 times x plus 5. So that happens here. Oh, that's to 25, sorry. Negative 21 over 25. Um, okay, so there's my frame for it. So, you know, it's it's either going to be here and here, or here or here, and it's going to be here or here. And I could figure them out. It's not going to be both. It's not going to be this, this or that, this or that. And the way I could get at them is by... Um, Maybe plugging in points, something like that, seeing what happens. Let me graph it on Desmos and see what happens. And then the bottom was a... Looks like this. See, I have that asymptote right there. Does this. And it's interesting here because it crosses the asymptote at zero, but then it goes above it, and then it starts to come back down towards it. See, so it, it can cross the asymptotes close 
um, but it, the asymptotes describe extreme behavior. So this graph looked something like that. Now what I want to do is uh, tack on two more ideas on, on top of this idea. So I'm going to think about my vertical asymptotes first on here, my zeros. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this bottom. So I have x over x minus 3, that denominator. And notice that my numerator is x minus 3. So actually, in this graph, something cancels out. The, the x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. So this simplifies to 1 over x. Well, I know what 1 over x looks like. It looks like this. Those points. So this is equivalent to that. With one exception, actually, though. There is one problem here. I lost some information when I factored out that x minus 3. Because I know that x cannot be 0. So that gives me this asymptote uh, here. Sorry. But I also know that in my original equation, x cannot be 3, right? If I plug 3 into this, I have 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. I can't, uh, I can't evaluate that. So that 3 actually happens right here. And what happens is if something cancels out, I actually get a hole in the graph at that point. And so notice x is 3 at that point. And if I plug that 3 into here, it's the point 3, 1 third. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce it if I can. Reduce it if. It looks like it says if, if. If I can. Um, this leads to holes. So if something cancels out, the thing that canceled out... There's going to be a hole there. Let me graph that on decimals and see what it looks like. So it looks like this. And notice that I can trace this along and it gives me these points. But when I get at 3, if I can get there, boom, 3 undefined. There's actually a hole in the graph there. There's no point there. So um, I have to identify holes in my graphs if they happen. And again, the only time that they happen is when something will cancel out. All right, let's take a look at this one. Um, x cubed minus 2x squared over x minus 2. Uh, I can factor an x squared out of the numerator. Oh, that cancels out x squared. So this is basically a parabola, but I lost some information. I lost the information that x cannot equal 2. So at 2, if I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. So this has a hole at the point 2, 4. So reduce it if you can, and if you can, there will be a hole at that point. All right, so we've talked about uh, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, holes. There's one other type of asymptote that I, that I want to talk about, and that's what's called a slant asymptote, and it only happens in a very, very special case. Okay, you can notice that the, um, the degrees are different, and this is a special case where the numerator degree is exactly one more than the denominator degree. So numerator degree is one more than the denominator degree. And this is the case that we call a slant asymptote. And I'm going to go ahead and graph this in Desmos and see what it looks like. So here's what it looks like right here. Now looking at that graph, hopefully uh, you can kind of see that if there was a just like a, a straight line right here, it looks like it pretty much approximates that line. That's a slant asymptote. It's a straight line that's an asymptote that is that is slanted instead of horizontal or vertical.
So, how do you find them? Well, let me tell you. Um, this land asymptote, again, this is if this is a one degree more than that. And our problems will be this is a second degree and this is a first degree. Well, this is division. We've done this. So let's just do this division. And what we'll do is we'll use synthetic division. So the zero from here is negative two. 1x squared, 5x, and a 7. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. Our remainder is 1. So notice what we have is this was an x squared, so it goes down to 1x plus 3 plus a remainder of 1, and that 1 is still being divided by the x plus 2. Now, here is the super clever part. Remember, asymptotes describe extreme behavior. So as x gets really big, we have this, but this is basically 1 over really big. So like 1 over 5,000. This approach is 0. So all that's left is this x plus 3. So that y equals x plus 3, you can see that that shows up in this graph. Um, y equals x plus 3. So that's a slope of 1 and y minus, uh, y minus up is 3. So 3 over 1 up 1. Back 1 down 1. And you can see that right there, there's our slant asymptote, where this function gets closer and closer to it. I want to emphasize that only happens when these are one apart. When you divide uh, that top by that bottom, and you get something that's linear, because eventually it approximates a linear equation. Um, looking at it, y equals x plus 3. Remember I said it describes extreme behavior. If I zoom out a ton, they start to look like the exact same thing. Like that just starts to look like that line. And it just has this little local problem here where x is negative 2, where you're trying to divide by 0 and it goes crazy. But everywhere else it just looks like a straight line. It's not exactly a straight line. You know, they're a little, they're a little bit apart, but they're pretty close to each other pretty quick. <laughs> you know, if I go up, I can zoom in quite a bit. But they get really close to each other. Like this distance right here, look, that's that's one half right there. This distance gets really small really quick. We'll just do one more. So as I look at this, nothing's going to cancel. The This degree is one more than that degree, so it's going to have a slant asymptote. So let me do that division. My zero is 3. 1x squared, negative 4x's, negative 5 1's. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. So my slant asymptote is x minus 1. And again, that just means that that line x minus 1, that's the asymptote that this thing will approximate. All right. Uh, give the problems in the book a try. Send me any questions you have, message me, or post them in the forums. Take care.